The principles have a slightly unfortunate name, and I think that's that's been to their disadvantage at the origin, because the drafters thought that calling them principles as opposed to rules would underline their their soft law character. But to those lawyers who think of principles rather in a jurisprudential way as more or less vague standards that can be employed differently in different contexts, that notion suggests to lawyers, particularly to commercial lawyers, uh, that they're vague and ambiguous, and that would lead to uncertainty once they're applied. And if there's one thing a commercial lawyer doesn't want, that's uncertainty. So, so there is this notion out there that the Unidra principles are just standards like good faith or reasonable or adequate or appropriate. Uh, but they're actually not. I mean, you find these, these vague standards in there, as you would find them in the, in the UK Sale, and, Sale of Goods Act, but they're by far not in the majority. You have hard and fast rules. So the notion of principles only applies to this idea of soft law, that they're not binding as such, but only if the parties or if an arbitral tribunal has chosen uh, that they should be binding. Yes, most, most lawyers will be in for a surprise if they open the, the Unidra principles, because they will find some concepts, but also some legal doctrines that they've been taught are, in a way, anathema. Uh, an English lawyer will open this and see at the very beginning that there's an article uh, saying that the parties are under a duty to act in accordance with good faith and fair dealing. Now, that still is, despite recent developments, still is quite alien to an English contract lawyer. But there are other, other, um, um, there are other rules and concepts and doctrines in there uh, that are, to say the least, surprising for someone from a so-called civil law jurisdiction. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a mix, uh, mostly between common law and civil law uh, um, ideas. And there's also some real innovations in there. For example, there's a section with three articles um, that codifies what we call the doctrine of hardship, how would the parties and how would a judge or an arbitrator actually deal with unexpected circumstances that came into being after the making of the contract and now make the contract, well, a really bad deal for one of the parties. If you were to talk to a practitioner who's a real skeptic and who thinks all oh, these unidra principles, they're useless, um, they're soft law and so on, adopting the practitioner's perspective, I would say, look, what do you want? You want to represent your client, so you want to get the best outcome for your client. Imagine you're in inter an international arbitration. Imagine the law that's applicable there, presumably a law that you're not familiar with, um, doesn't have an answer to the question that is at stake. So you now turn to the Unidra principles and you see they have an answer and hey, it's even in favor of your client. Now, would you wish to use the Unidra principles or not? I think for a practitioner, that's quite an easy question to answer.